what was the um the drive to even do that sort of shit like where did you even where did it even enter your head that that stuff was possible or did you just not even know it was possible you're just like fuck i just oh, just wanted to go for the biggest jumps i think the big thing was starting to film with dana for the crusty videos for part one we'd go find a jump and we're oh that jump was big third gear you know that jump seemed big. We'd go home and watch it on the video, and it just looked way smaller. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah. so if a third gear jump looks like a second gear jump, we're going to have to hit fourth and fifth gear jumps from now on. So we just kept looking for bigger jumps. So it's always trying to get to that 200-foot mark and hit it in fifth gear, whether it was dunes or, or dirt hits that we built. So it was just always trying to go bigger. Did you have, like, a fear switch? Like, were you scared of... Uh, this stuff and you were like doing a manual override or do you <laughs> do you think because like that's like rob like i'm real close with robbie like he's scared of his shit you know yeah. like it scares him to the point where he breaks it down he processes that fear and then it's like this active battle between like robbie and the fear and like he has to yeah. figure out how i overcome that like were you a dude that had that sort of battle or were you just like it was just dri- like drive to just fucking send it more drive and there definitely is a switch i mean you definitely have to flip that fuck it switch when it's go time and just say you know what i got myself in this situation talked about doing it i'm not gonna bitch out now going for it so you just have to flip flip that switch kind of like fuck it here we go and just start banging gears at the takeoff and not even think about anything but launching your bike really but as you got like more hurt or you had more these crashes and stuff like did it, did it slow you down or you were just so in control of that switch? Oh, the switch is still there. Like even when I was in control and I'd worked up to it and I was you know, sure what speed, like when in 2008, when I jumped 301 feet at Calder Park, like I, I knew the danger there and I was definitely nervous and, and scared because it's deadly. But at the same time, that was the thing I'd been waiting to do for so long mm. that I just, it was just, it was go to time to work. You know, it's basically a job that you create for yourself and, now you got to do it whether you, you want to or not. Did you almost have a, a thing where like you, you like held yourself accountable or you, if you said you were going to do it, like the more you said you were going to do or the bigger you said you were going to go, is that sort of a thing that would drive you to like, um, it's like, fuck, well, I said I was going to do it. And then you use that statement to then motivate you to like uh, not back out a little, but not really more just like, I just wanted to keep going bigger. And then as I started doing uh, bigger, bigger jumps, I saw that Robbie Knievel was getting all this airtime on TV, just, you know, using his last name, coattail yeah. and his dad, but not really pushing the limit of distance and jumps. They were all calculated and fairly safe compared to what I wanted to do. So that's what just, you know, kept, the drive for, for going 300 feet and for breaking the distance record at the time was 250 feet. And so that seems like nothing to yeah, that. And now it's, you know, over 400 feet. So it's just crazy. And it's just all real speed. Really. It's just about speed. It's so physics, how fast yeah. can your bike go? And the old CR 252 stroke only goes so fast. So we get on the 450 and gear that thing up and make it try to do hundred miles an hour. Once you're over hundred miles an hour, these bikes aren't made to go that fast. Mm. So we just need faster, bigger bikes. 